All right. Well, again, thank you for attending. Um, so I have prepared a uh, boring presentation and I will try my best to stick to this uh, presentation. And uh, during the workshop, uh, there might be some times um, that I will switch to another screen to show you something, um, but I will try, like I said, I will try my best to stick to this presentation. So first of all, this is uh, the page of about me. I would, in this page, I would like to introduce myself officially. My name is Song Yao Chen, and I am the data science librarian of Cook Library, Towson University. And my email address is schen at towson.edu. And uh, my office number is 410-704-5. One six nine. If you have any questions, not limited to the data related question, but any question related to uh, library resources, feel free to contact me anytime, and I will. Well, so I can say I will try my best to re to to respond to you as early as possible. And uh, like I said, always uh, to it to everybody is that if I don't know the answer of the question, I will definitely find someone to answer the question for you. So, so for this, for uh, today's workshop, Research Data Services, this is the agenda um, of, of my um, workshop. First of all, um, I will try to introduce the Research Data Services items briefly in general. And uh, here are the three service categories um, of the current research data services provided, data management plans, data sets or data repository, and data analysis and data visualization. And then I will show you by some kind of uh, figures, the situation of the current cases um, that I have and uh, the cases that I have handled. So we will have, I, I'm trying to uh, tell um, what the current situation of the cases of data that, that we are, we are, we're dealing with. And then a brief introduction of our space, uh, a space in the second floor of the library data studio in which we have some computers installed with some data related applications that open um, for everybody in the university community. And finally, um, just a briefly introduction of this new or newly developed scholarly research support provided by the, the entire department um, of my department in the library, which we are providing not only the data services, but some services like open access, um, open educational resources, um, scholarly altimetric, um, scholarly impact, and uh, digital publishing, etc. So if you have any in the future, if you have any, have any um, questions or concerns about that, feel free to contact me or everyone that listed in these pages. So first of all, what is research data services? Um, I admit that I tried really hard on internet <laughs> to find out this definition that I think could uh, be used here because, frankly speaking, there are still some kind of arguments and still some kind of uh, discussions about what is the research data services provided by the academic libraries. So here is the white paper that I found from the uh, ALA.org, um, American Library Association, and I think it can, well, relatively better to define what the research data services we're providing. So research data services are services that a library offers to researchers in relation to managing data and can include informational services, for example, consulting with faculty, staff, or students on data management plans or metadata standards and providing reference support 
for finding and citing data sets or providing web guides and finding aids for data or data sets, as well as technical services, for example, providing technical support for data repository, preparing data sets for a repository, deaccessioning or deselecting data sets from a repository or creating metadata for data sets. Um, it, is, it is very um, interesting that so far the cases that I have handled um, just fit in some categories in this definition that I will show you later. That's why I call this definition looks better for my workshop today. So <clears throat> talking about the specific uh, services I am providing, First of all, like I have introduced before, the categories um, can be um, can be recognized as three. Number one, data management plan related. Number two, data analysis or data visualization related. And number three, uh, data sets or data repository related. Through number one, the research guide, um, I have included a link to the research guide that I have developed related to data. I tried my best to include all the resources related to research data management and research data services in this research guide. And uh, afterwards, I will share this presentation file to all of you and feel free to click all of the links that included in this presentation that you, you may find something useful um, for, for, for your study or your, your classes or your courses, et cetera. And number two, the consultations. I myself personally prefer to have this kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one or small group discussions or consultations um, <laughs> rather than some, some kind of uh, library sessions. Of, of course, library sessions for, uh, is another services that I am providing, of course. Uh, it's, the, it's the third one. Uh, uh, but so far, I have to admit, Almost all of the cases uh, were through the consultations or small group discussions. And then, of course, Data Studio is another important way to provide uh, research data services through uh, the application, through the, the computers, and through these places for, um, for you to use. So let's talk about the first one, um, data management plan. Um, I have summar summarized this series of questions um, or issues when, uh, when the professors approached to me for their um, requests or demands um, towards the data management plan. So there are some questions when the researchers are thinking, I, I, I assume is that number one, um, I am composing a grant proposal and I need some support, but I don't have time to read through all of the data management plan requirement documents because right now almost all of the funders um, have this kind of requirements uh, for the applicants to submit a data management plan. But uh, well, to be honest, there are a lot of documents provided by every funders and uh, it, it is very time costly for you to find out just one section of uh, about that data management plan. So some, sometimes it's, it is the issue. I don't have time to read through all of the data management plan requirement documents and or I don't have enough time to compose this data management plan. Well, it is only required uh, by the funders as a, a two pages data management plan, but still, if if you don't have a clue, um, it is it, it it is not difficult to think. It's 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 just a confusion on which directions you are going to compose this kind of uh, document data management plan, or I don't have enough time to review the data management plan. Sometimes, as the collaborator in a study group or research team, um, sometimes you will be requested to review the data management plan composed by um, either the PI or another collaborators in the team. But sometimes th this is another issue for you to review the data management plan. And then uh, the question, 
leads to this. Could someone tell me what a data management plan is? Or could someone tell me how to compose the data management plan? Et cetera, et cetera. That's why I use that five dots here because there, there are more and more questions related to data management plan. So what I want to tell in this page is that if you have any kinds of or any um, series of this kind of a question, feel free to approach to me. And uh, I won't, I'm more than happy to have this kind of discussion or consultation with you. Well, a heads up, data management plan, I think could be the easiest one or easiest section in the, in the entire grant proposal. It is a standardized document that you can use a step-by-step -step standardized tool to compose by just filling the contents based on the guideline provided by that tool. And you can have you can have a whole data management plan uh, with a standard format, and you can edit it based on your own, I don't know, preference or something like that. So this is something that I will talk later. So this is a, some kind of a summary, summarize the content for the data management plan. First of all, of course, right now, a data management plan or by NIH, it's called data management and sharing plan are required, is a required section of all of, almost all of the grant pro proposals. And it is required by most of the funders, NIH, NI, uh, NSF, NIJ, DOD, et cetera. Um, there is a link here that you can click to find out um, a big list of the funder requirements documents. If you, want, if you like, you can choose to read through it, but it, trust me, it's very time costly. So, <laughs> In general, I have summarized um, after reading through a lot of re this kind of requirements I have uh, summarized in general, there are only five bullets or five points that require to be included in a data management plan for most of the funders. So like I said, first of all, is the data type. It's more like what kind of a data type that you plan to use for the created research data sets uh, from your study or from your research. And number two, what data standards, or sometimes it should be called like, what kind of a metadata schemes or standards that you're going to use for your research data sets created from your study or your research. And number three, data access, that means how would you plan or how would your team plan to manage the access to the research data set created from um, your research or your study? And that includes, actually, that includes sometimes, I will say some, sometimes, strictly speaking, sometimes it includes how would you plan the access to the created data sets during the period of this research and after the conclusion of this or the conclusion of this whole research. For the former one, it means that how would you plan to find a platform to share this data with the collaborators inside of your team? For the latter one, it means that how would you plan to manage the access to your published part of the research data sets, like uh, how long would you like to set your embargo time and uh, what kind of, which part of the research data sets that you would like to share. And that leads to the fourth one, the data sharing is that how would you plan to share your, your data sets? And like I said, that means that how would you, how, how, how do you like to, um, which part would you like to share and uh, how would you like to set up your sharing to, to share your research data set? And number five is sometimes the funder required uh, the applicants to include how would you plan to preserve and store 
the created research data sets like uh, uh, which data repository or which data archive you choose to, to archive or, or store your data and how would you like to set up again the sharing or the access to those stored data sets. And then the final points here in this page is dnptool.org. And that is the tool that I mentioned that will help you compose a standard data management plan by a step-by-step -step wizard like filling contents with the guideline to compose the data management plan tool. So let's go to the data management plan tool and I'm going to share another page with you. There you go. So and this is data is dmptool.org. We call it dmptool.org. is uh, it is very easy to remember the URL dmptool.org. And by using your Towson University credential or specifically um, your Towson email address, you can use this tool directly without any extra registration step, like what I, I am doing now. Okay, so using your Towson email address, uh, you can log in. And this is the, the default first page for everybody, my dashboard. And in this page, let in, in this page, all of the data management plan you have composed are listed, including those for mocking and practicing. And yes, in this tool, you can choose to mock or to practice composing a data management plan. So the most important part in this tool is this one: create plan. I would like to save this for my later step. So first of all, we just uh, skip this step and then we, we can go to the funder requirements section. And in this section, you can find almost all of the requirement documents of, of almost all of the funders. By key in the acronym name of every funder like NIH or NSF and click search, you can find or filter out um, the funder requirement documents here. And by clicking this, you can open um, either the website of the documents or the PDF file directly of the documents. And this is just the funder requirements. And here, public DMPs, in this section, all of the data management um, that going to public are listed here. And um, I would like to say, uh, feel free to use every, each of every uh, data management plan in this section for your easy reference. But I would like to, to, to emphasize is that all of the data management plans uh, that listed here are only because that the author chose to make this data management plan uh, be published here. It doesn't mean anything else. It doesn't mean that this data management plan um, has been accepted by the funders. It doesn't mean this management plan is a good one. It doesn't mean it is a bad one. It doesn't even mean it is a um, it is an, an entire one because you may find some kind of a missing sections in some data management plan here. So I would like to say again is that feel free to use this as your easy reference when you're composing a data management plan using dmptool.org, but please keep in mind that this is only for your reference. It doesn't mean anything. It, I think in most of, uh, not, not most, in some cases, some data management plans here actually um, were not accepted by the funders. 
So this is something that I wanted to tell you for this section. Okay, and this section help actually include a lot of useful resources and useful information. And I encourage you to um, going through briefly this section, you may find a lot of useful resources uh, in text. So after um, this section, let's go back to the most important one, create plan. Well, actually, um, I, I'm going to um, give another presentation talking about data management plan and dnp2.org next week. So here today, I'm just to briefly introduce um, what, this, what, what this works. So first of all, in this section, uh, the first screen is that you may want to um, key in your research project. Uh, you may want to select the primary uh, research organization. Of course, this is uh, by default, it's a, it is Towson University. And here by key in, by key in um, your funder's name, you can choose one. And please be noted that for this field, you can only select from the drop down list instead of keying the name. So uh, after you key in this uh, funder's name, uh, this field uh, will appear. Uh, it means which DMP templates would you like to use? Because like I uh, like I'm doing this example for NSF, there are several different DMP templates that you can choose. For example, let's let's take um, bi biological sciences as, as an example. And for these pages on the right, when you are key in the um, let's when you are keying the research project name September twenty seven two thousand twenty three, and you can choose to check out this box mock project for testing practice or educational purposes. Uh, check this, and uh, this is just a test one or a mocking one. Or, and on, uh, on, the, on the second line is that no research organization associated. It's, it's like, um, it's good to have an option here. <laughs> and another one, of course, for the funders, no funder associated with this plan. And then after you have completed this, um, uh, this section, click that create plan. And then we're going to this section. It requires you to key in some important information about this whole project. Well, you may have noticed this is some several tabs on here. Some of the contents in this tab, in this tabs are will be on the final data management plan, but, but some will not be. For example, in this section of uh, project details, this project abstract will be on your final composed data management plan. But this research domain and uh, this uh, funding status, funding opportunity numbers, grant numbers will not, will not. So, Choose just 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 uh just to key in the, the information that you want, and of course this project start and project end will be on your data management plan. And collaborators, this section will not be on your data management plan, so feel free to add your project con contributors here by click this adding a contributor. But please be note, please be noted that in this section, collaborators, there are two sections, project contributors and the DMP collaborators. As you can see, these two sections are different. So for DMP collaborators, as you can see, this is my email address. And by default, I will be listed in your DMP collaborators. And if you want another one, invite another one to be your DMP collaborators, when you click this section, request the feedback, this DMP draft will be sent to all of the people that listed here, DMP collaborators, but will not be sent to the contributors you listed here. 
unless you add your contributor your project contributors into your DMP collaborators, your project your project contributors will not accept or receive any DMP draft that you composed here. Okay, so this section right plan is the I think is the most important section subsection in this section. So as you can see, let's take another take one section for example because of the time. This section means data and material produced. So this is a briefly description of uh, the content of this section, like describe the types of the data, like I mentioned before, physical samples or collections, uh, software, curriculum materials, and other materials to be produced, uh, blah, blah, blah. And on the right, here is the guidance here. We have an SF guidance listed here, but uh, but uh, honestly speaking, if you click here, you're you're going to the website or the documents, the entire documents uh, pro published or provided by the funders. So I recommend you to click here, DMP tool, and here you will have a specific data description or guideline for you to fill in the contents in this section. For example, here in data description, you will have like a give a summary of the data you will collect or create it, uh, for example, some, something like that. So in this section, you will be guided to fill in every section in the data management plan. Just I will explain it elaborately later, not later, uh, in another workshop, but I would like to give you a heads up. It, it's like if you don't have the content, for any section here, you don't, you are not required to fill in. It's not, they're not mandatory. Some sections are not mandatory, but if you do have some contents that you think can match the description or the guideline listed, um, I, re I highly recommend you to, to fill it in. So um, in so this section research outputs this section is a purely section for for your reference it will not be listed or um, appear or uh, appearing on your data management plan so if you click this add um, research output here you will have this section listed here it's like if you have one research output of data set you can choose here and you can um, record it by keying this content. And uh, if you have an intended data repository, you can list it here. Any metadata standard you want to use, you can list it here. Again, this is just for your record or for your reference uh, that you can come back and check. And feel free to add another one after you click Save. And you can click here to view all of your research outputs. And request the feedback. Okay, by default, this is me. If you click your request of feedback, automatically the system will send an email with a link directly to your data management plan to me. And I, I will review all of your data management plan by, by, click, uh, by clicking that link and give you any kind of uh, comments in this uh, the, uh, dmptool.org. So finalize in this section here because uh, because I have checked that mock or practice checkbox here. So this button cannot be clicked because a mock uh, a, a mock project or data management cannot be a uh, set a plan visibility. But if it is it is not a mock project, you can set your visibility. For example, if you choose to put your data management plan in public, you can check this one public, anyone can view. And this data, ma data management plan will be in this section on public DMPs. And here is a very interesting section. Um, if it is not a mock project, you can, your, this data management plan can be assigned a persistent ID, DOI link or something like that by click this one, register plan. And uh, I don't know what it's, uh, how you can use it, but 
one thing that can be confirmed is that you can include this DOI link into your academic profile as one of your academic work. So this is uh, some an update that uh, has been marked as a milestone of data uh, of dmptool.org. Yeah, feel free to try it if you like. So the final one is down low and by default, the format is PDF, but I would always change it to DOCX so I can edit it and change the format and anything else in Word. And by clicking this uh, download plan, you will have a Word file um, that's created by this tool. So um, this is uh, the uh, this is a brief brief introduction of dmptool.org, and I will go back to my PowerPoint here and go to my next page. Yeah, this is um, just an example um, of the requirement from NIH for the final DMS policy. Um, all of the link um, that you can click um, that can be um, directed you to all of the documents and the website accordingly. And briefly speaking, uh, for, for, for the elements of a data management plan for, for NIH, first of all, data type, like I said, related tools, software and code, standards, data preservation, access and associated timeline, access to distrib distribution or reuse considerations, and oversight of data management and sharing. Well, apparently it needs you to give uh, them a general looking or general or big picture of uh, this whole data management and sharing uh, plan for, for the uh, grant proposals uh, for, for, to NIH. And of course, uh, this page is for your easy reference uh, to go to the dmptour.org and the research guide page specifically for data management plan and dmptour.org. And this is a screenshot that I found from the NIH.gov that when you're composing your data management and sharing plan for NIH, there's an there's a important tip consider consulting institutional resources such as librarians and data managers to help plan effectively. And that would be me. Okay, so much for the data management plan. Let's go to the data analysis or data visualization. Um, this is, uh, again, likewise, some kind of um, issues or some kind of concerns uh, when I believe uh, your case can be supported in this kind of service category. I need some support or suggestions to build figures for number one, some presentations on for the conference, number two, for some for your papers to publish. And second, I need some support or suggestions for the data that created from your study. It's like number one, to be reorganized for some analysis, number two, to be cleaned for some analysis and number three to be manipulated for the uh, for the future analysis or visualized. The third one, I need some support or suggestions for the tools or strategies for number one, the data visualization tasks for your research or study. And number two, the data analysis for your paper or for your study, et cetera. And of course, the fourth one, I need some supports or suggestions for the utilization for number one, ArcGIS or Excel or R or RStudio, et cetera. All of this, all of this um, are from the cases that I have covered either from the faculty members or from the students. Of course, uh, for the fourth, uh, for the fourth points uh, that I need some support or suggestions for the utilization for ArcGIS, Excel, or R or R Studio, were all the cases uh, from the students, graduate students or undergraduate students. They just some kind. They they just need some support or suggestions when they're using these data related applications uh, to finish their project or for for their um, assignments or something like that. 
The other three build figures on um, uh, data reorganized or data cleaning or some tools or strategies are all from the cases um, that I have handled for faculty. So some of them are for the presentations or papers for the conference. Some of them are for the papers that they are writing and uh, they are waiting to publish. And um, some of them are in their um, like the starting period of their the whole project that they need some support for their data. And actually, I'm going to um, talk about it later in another section. There are uh, some faculty members approach to me for the support for the data sets, that is said, secondary data sets for their study or research, uh, pub the paper to publish or something like that. And there are some tools and some cases I just mentioned listed here. For the tools so far in the cases that I have handled, Excel is the most used, used the tools for the cases in this uh, service category. And then SPSS and Power BI, which is, I think is a very powerful data visualization tool that I like so much. And then, like I said before, ArcGIS, Python, and RR Studio. Most of the cases related to these tools are from the students. And the cases, it's about data cleaning, um, data reorganizing, um, and build figures, et cetera. I'm going to um, show you in figures later when, 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 I'm, going to sh when I'm showing you the cases situation um, later. So going to the data repository and the data storage, some questions I have listed here is, number one, what choices do I have for sharing data with my collaborators securely and effectively? Number two, what choices do I have for storing and sharing data after the publication? Number three, I need supports uh, for the secondary data for my study. And number four, I need supports or suggestions for the data sets that can be used for my students to, number one, practice their data skills. Number two, finish the final, finish their final project or assignment. And uh, for, for the first one, for, for the first question, it is the cases like, uh, Right now, I am conducting some study, uh, a study or research project with the collaborators outside of the, the university. And we have several data sets that need to be shared and need to be transferred during the whole research uh, period. And this is the question and the issues um, that, um, that I have when I, when I was handling this kind of cases. Uh, well, my solution or my suggestion or support was that I involved our OTS into this whole cases and discuss the best solution for this kind of cases, considering number one, the data size in this cases. It's like how big will the data sets will be? It's like a gigabyte um, in scale or terabytes in scale. For different data size, there will be different solution. And number two, uh, what's what's the main issue in this kind of cases? Number, uh, is is the transferring the main issue, or if the data sharing securely, the main issue? Because in some cases, um, the researchers just need to trans transfer the data sets instead of um, handling the data sets either online or something like that. But in some other cases, the collaborators need to handling the data sets, not in the meantime and not in the same time, but they need to look at the comments and some kind of uh, uh, communication upon different data sets. So that will be another solution. So for the first issue, for the first question here, it will be discussed at case by case. And it and and I would involve 
OTS into every cases uh, depends on different scenario of the cases. And uh, for the second question, it is all about the selection and evaluation of the data repository or data store after um, this uh, study or research paper has been published. Uh, it's, it's, it's more like the discussions like uh, what, which part of the data sets that created uh, the researcher, the researcher would like to share and uh, how long would the embargo would the embargo be set for this research data set? And uh, would the situation of the sensitive data in this whole research data set? And of course, the most important one is that how can you tell which discipline uh, of this research? Because there will be, there are some disciplinary data repository recommended or required, sometimes required by the funders. So likewise, it will be discussed case by case. And for the, for the third one, I need support for the secondary data for my study. It's, it's more like um, for some study or researcher of, or, or research project, the researchers has conducted some kind of issue, some, some kind of a, a survey or interview. Um, they have completed um, the, their um, primary data collection but they, they need some support for the secondary data set searching and secondary data set evaluation. That's when they approach to me to find out uh, some appropriate or some um, accurate secondary data set searching um, for them to support um, their research in their paper or their research project. And of course, the, 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 the last one, more of, so far, more of uh, most of the these cases are from the students, they, or the professors uh, for their students or for their classes. Sometimes they need some suggestions of where and when. No, sorry, where to find the the, the data sets for their students to practice their data skills. Well, in in these cases, most of the cases, I would uh, suggest uh, Kaggle.com or um, Tableau Academic for them to find out some 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 um, data set for there to uh, practice. To finish the final project or assignments, in the cases like that, the students are, the, the students, the, the only thing the students needed are were some numbers from a bigger data set or something like that. In, in case like that, I would recommend some databases like uh, Statista or like um, Scopus for them to find out the numbers that they need for their final project presentation, something like that. And here are some data repository and the storage uh, choices uh, that I have deal with in my historic cases. First of all, well, this link uh, leads to uh, the data repository sections in my data research guide and in which you may find a lot of useful resources related to data repository and data sets. And for the academic data repository, ICPSR and Open ICPSR, Dataverse and Dryad um, were there in, my, in the first group when I need some solutions or, or need to find out some academic secondary data sets. And the, the data sets choices for data skills, like I said, Tableau Public, uh, it, it includes a lot of data sets that you can use to practice um, the skills of data visualization or data analysis. And Kaggle.com is another good resources uh, for people to find out the data sets um, to practice um, their skills. And here are the cases um, that I want to show you, the cases that, that I have handled, I want to show you in these three different uh, service categories, in DMP, a data management plan, dmptool.org, a data analysis, visualization, and data repository and storage. And this is the Power BI report uh, link. By clicking this link, uh, you'll be redirected to um, this, this uh, which visualize the report. So let me share this for you. 
All right. <laughs> this is my report. Uh, it has several different blocks here. And as you can see, first of all, if the affiliation so far, uh, we have this, uh, this affiliations uh, related to cases and uh, another block researchers, we have the researchers from this uh, different affiliations. As you can see, we have uh, combined bars uh, in this block uh, for this um, dark blue one is the count of cases. For this light blue one, is the count of researcher. For example, if we're looking at this one, writing center, it's because right now, currently, I have two cases from writing center, but uh, from just one researcher, because this researcher, this researcher is from the writing center. And um, it's... Uh, and for this block, it's tools and supports. As you can see, we have this kind of, uh, this, uh, this series of tools and supports in, involved. We have five cases um, related to Excel, six cases related to dmptool.org. And of course, it shows in another block service category, all of the cases related to dmptool.org are the cases uh, that in the category of data management plan. And we have four for, for Power BI and all. all of them are from the service category of data analysis and visualization, et cetera. And uh, as you may have noticed that there are two for OTS, like I mentioned before, these two cases are all are all in the category of data sets and the repository. And of course, uh, it's reflected in this block funders. In this two cases, one is from an SF, one is related to, to NIH. Okay. And here are the, some numbers. So, as you may have noticed, by clicking, um, by clicking the the the, you know, the, either the pies or either the bars or either the blocks uh, here, uh, you can find out uh, the changes uh, in every different blocks here. So you may have a big picture or a kind of a small pictures um, for the cases currently um, that I am handling and I have handled. So feel free to um, play with this report. I um, I found out that I, I can't stop uh, when I was playing with it. So uh, let's go back to my slides. Yeah. Um, and this is just a page to show to show you the the situation of the data studio. It's more like. Uh, it's on the second floor of the library. It has four, uh, five workstations with the, these applications installed. And this, of course, a research guide of Data Studio. But I would like to, to, to focus as uh, you may have find out this atlas.ty and mini tab has been marked in red. That's because atlas.ty and mini tab don't have the institutional licensing. Which means in this computers, this these two applications has been installed, but no license. If I've heard that some colleges uh, has their own college licensing for these two applications, <laughs> excuse me. But uh, unfortunately, unless you have this college of licensing, um, you don't have license or or university license to use this to. Uh, to use these two applications. And of course, we're working on that, but uh, it still needs some time to, for it. Okay, this is um, the new blog that you may find uh, by clicking um, this link here. It's called Scholarly Research Support. From developing a data management plan for a grant proposal, to publishing, sharing, and preserving your own research, Cook Library can help faculty, students, and staff at every step of the research life cycle. So the blog create, we have data studio, research data services, and evidence synthesis. And we have published blog. We are, we, we are supporting the 
the, the issues with copyright and open licenses and, and open journals, which means if you wanted to publish your work um, for free or the, in digital journals in Towson University, maybe you can approach to us for some support. And of course, scholar work is, is, is the institutional repository to store your works, uh, papers or something like that. And of course, impact ORCID research metrics, library events, and digital research posters uh, can uh, can be supported uh, here in this uh, in this section uh, by our by my colleague here. Okay, that concludes my workshop here, and I apologize for not giving you a moment for you to ask questions. So right now, it's your chance to ask me any questions that uh, in your mind, and thank you so much. Anything? Oh, uh, yeah, please, please go ahead, Professor Chen. Oh. <laughs> I was just uh, clapping the hands for this um very informative workshop. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do have a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, oh, I sure. yeah. yeah yeah. My question is, I you know basically I came to this uh, workshop because I have two questions, and I think you have listed in one of your uh, slides. Um, so I am teaching students about writing a white paper, and uh, one like. Uh, requirements for the student is to incorporate data into their writing to support their arguments. And uh, uh, so my question is, I need to support a suggestion for, you know, the data sets that can be used for my students. And I found that you have mentioned um, some data sets like uh, um, Tableau Public, and uh, the other one, sorry, I forgot the name, but I think it's on one of your okay. slides. Yeah. Kaggle.com. Oh, yeah, Kaggle.com. So I'm wondering that if um, those, you know, I I, I use a Tableau for just a, a few, like um, a few times, but I, you know, didn't dig into it. So I'm wondering that if Tableau um, public, um, what kind of data sets it has there? And since my students, you know, come from varied backgrounds and they have very broad range of topics to write for their assignments. So yeah, maybe you could brief me on the types or uh, categories of data sets students could find on this, um, yeah, data sets. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. First of all, well, thank you so much for asking for 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 asking this question. This is a very good question. Um, and uh, um, I have sorry, I'm uh, meaning. Okay, um, I have posted uh, I have posted a link um that listed the 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 link to the Tableau datasets. But I want I would like to say is that. From my experience, Kaggle, the data sets on Kaggle.com and Tableau, the main or the primary purpose of this two actually are for practicing. Uh, I, I, if you understand that, it's, it's, it's that all of the data sets, I believe, sorry, I believe all of the data sets listed there has been manipulated it's not the raw data or original research data. And, and I can tell that they have the uh, authentication of the genuineness or reality of the data because they're all, for example, Kaggle.com, they have a very long tradition for the user to compete their data practicing skill by using the same data sets. So, so that is, uh, why they are listing those uh, data sets after the min but the manipulation. But to go back to your question is that if your students wanted to use the data to support their arguments, they would like to, I think they want to use the numbers or the data from the real world, which I think going to, going to uh, first of all, ICPSR or open ICPSR or Dataverse or um, like um, 
um, dryad, or even some databases like a Statista or the um, um, another one from from the from the business, some databases that that can can provide the real data would be a better choices for your students. Of course, like I said, this should be discussed the case by case. So feel free to send your student or feel free to approach to me anytime you want. And I'm happy to open this kind of discussion along with you and your student all together. So. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Actually, you understand my uh, question better than I. Yeah, um, yeah, I think the first step is to use um, Tableau, um, you know, public and Kaggle.com to help them understand how they can, uh, you know, use data or, um, I mean, visualize data and uh, yeah, sort of like they can format data to um, appropriately to support their argument, but it's just for practice purpose. And you're right. And I'm also looking for, you know, the data set I can introduce to students and here are the real world data and you got to kind of like dig, dig into it and select the extract data for your, you know, um, yeah, argument or research purpose. So I think you're right. And just one uh, quick question, sorry for for, for, just, for keeping you long here for my question. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah. Um, so, um, you know, in my past teaching and I used the Statista, uh, that is a great database. But at the same time, I found that Statista um, you know, um, it's not free for public. Um, so my question is, has Towson subscribed to uh, Statista uh, or if students can access the Statista by using their Towson email address or account? Um, to, answer, to answer the question, well, there is a short answer. Yes, of course. Oh, great. Yes. Um, let me, Statista... Um, I I believe if you go to, oh yeah, this is well. Let me introduce Shanna Gass as my colleague. Uh, yeah, who I met who her is... yesterday. <laughs> she's my yeah, she's my friend now. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. And 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 of course, uh, we have. Let me copy paste this link in the chat box, so you can so you will um be redirected directly to Statista. And uh, please, please be sure that you access to this databases either on campus or mm -hmm. using the, the university VPN. So. Okay. Okay. Got you. Okay. That's so helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think I don't have any questions. I'm good now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking questions. Thank you so much. And any questions? You would like to ask me anything? Hey, <laughs> I've got Hi, a question. Hi, uh, just in case people are wondering, like, um, and hi, Jen Fen. <laughs> the um, and everybody. Um, if students were going to start getting used to using these tools, like, and were totally new to like something like Tableau, um, you know how long would it really take them like let's say there were a class and they're just totally new to it oh. how long would that take before they could start you know well, utilizing <laughs> it in a way i know that's like a lifelong journey but you know more about the tools so well um well you have touched base a little bit of, of the, the how long it's a lifelong journey it's a it's a it's one aspect of the answer to this question. But to, to answer this question, um, there, are, there, there are several aspects. First of all, well, per my experience, you may just need one to two hours to get familiar with the buttons and the features and the functions on this uh, tools to learn how to build an easy figures with bars or lines. But if you have some kind of a real research data sets from the real world, it may cost you from one day to one month, even one year to find out what's, what is the best utilization to use these tools to tell a good story using this original data sets. 
Well, from my experience, it, it is that that the 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 most difficult tasks might not be how to use these tools to build figures or how to click the buttons or use the menu features, but how to play with your raw or your original data sets. You may find that from just the one, let's say workbook of Excel, you can derive hundreds of tables or forms from, 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 from this data sets just for you to tell different stories or just for you to support different arguments in just one paper. So I would say that for every tools uh, that I have listed here in my presentation, like Tableau Public, like Power BI or SPS or even Excel, you can you can dig deeper and deeper and deeper without uh, in an endless period or endless journey. And you can always find out something new or something inspiring or 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 or, or something that um can stimulate you in stimulate you some new ideas with the whole task or something like that. So yeah, you have touch base first of all. That might be a lifelong journey, but to, to answer the questions or for the students, you can just uh, spend one or two hours to learn how to click the, the button or how to um, use this tool to build a figure or something like that. But the deeper you the deeper you dig, uh, the more you may find the more you may find from the tools and uh, maybe you may find that uh, the more things that you need to learn from from this whole thing so yeah, and that that, that, that made sense what you were saying about that the that the data sets are for practice because often it's sort of a mess when you first get it and you have to figure out yeah, yep. and, and, ways, and I those I, I would like, like to say is that those data sets purely for practice has been cleaned, has mm -hmm. been reorganized, has been manipulated for the people to practice their data skills. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes the first difficult task for a data visualization or data, or, or data analysis task is to clean and uh, organize the raw data because sometimes the data sets from a survey or for some interview, they are they are they are really messy, and uh, you may want to either categorize or I don't I don't remember the word, but it's a a, a kind of data manipulation process um, for it. So, thanks thanks for the for the answer. That that's very helpful. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. We are right now. Uh, it's eleven four, and I am.